Good morning. <clears throat> wow. Good morning. How is everyone today? It is six in the morning. I just woke up, which is a little bit late for me. Uh, so I feel like I slept in a little bit, which is always such a good feeling. But I got a delivery yesterday and I wanted to open it up with you guys because I got new dishes. <laughs> so exciting, right? Well, the dishes that we have were hand-me-downs from my husband's family. It's just something we never really thought about, but those dishes are probably, I wanna say 50 years old. Yeah, my husband's pretty sure that his parents got them for their wedding. <laughs> They're just really old. Some are starting to chip. I have like a set of bowls where like the glaze is starting to crack and I'm like, Ugh, all of these things are way too old. So I purchased a new dinnerware set and I was so excited to find these. So I just got two sets of 12 and I guess they sent a set in each box. I could not believe how big these were. So anyway, let's go ahead and bust these open. So this is what the plates look like. I actually got two different colors. So this is the gray color, but let me unpack everything and then I can show you the whole set. Do you wanna check out the new plates? Sniffy sniffies. So here are the dishes. So it came with four dinner plates, four salad plates, and then four of these bowls. Aren't they so pretty? I love this color, this graphite gray. And then I also got this white, which is so cool. It looks like it's washed a little bit with the gray, so it has like a little bit of a weathered look. You can see it better on the bowl here. So it's like a little modern French country. I really, really love them. I'm thinking about actually ordering two more sets because this gives me eight place settings. I think it'll be nice to have 16 just in case. I think this was a collaboration between Staub and Sur La Table, so I think maybe it's like limited edition. I feel like I should just get them now if I want them. And then I did order from Amazon some like, ow, some um, glass like food storage containers. I just like threw, I had a bunch of like really old like plastic ones and I had to just toss all those. They were all like cracking. They were starting to just, you couldn't microwave with them. I'll just say that. And I have some glass like Pyrex sets and I love those, but I found these glass food containers with bamboo tops because my Pyrex ones, they're glass on the bottom, but then they have a plastic top and I'm really just trying to avoid plastic. So I thought I would try these out. So it's like a set of four. This is the biggest one. So they can like nest uh, one inside the other. This is what the bamboo top looks like. So it does have this like little rubber stopper around there, I guess to keep it really sealed tightly. Let's see if they say anything about that piece. Um, it's plastic free, BPA free, phthalate free, recyclable, biodegradable, um, hand wash tops only, dry after cleaning, do not put tops in oven, dishwasher, or microwave. So that's interesting. They're saying this rubber stopper part is not plastic. Okay. And they look really pretty too. I really like the um, bamboo top-like accent. So here's the set. Oh, I'm so excited. And if these work out, I am definitely getting another one because I really just like cleaned house and just like threw out all of those old plastic storage containers because I was talking to my husband and I was like, we brought these over from New York and they were like like takeout containers that we didn't want to just like throw away. So we just had tons of these really cheap plastic containers, which were fine for a while, but they just started like smelling weird, like all these things. And I'm like, I feel like we're slowly killing ourselves. So let's just get rid of these. But I'm happy to be replacing them with these. And these tops really aren't that heavy. That was kind of my concern that if, you know, they were like wood, um, they would be kind of like weighty, but I guess the bamboo wood keeps them kind of light. So that was fun. I, you know, I don't usually buy a lot of housewares, but um, I think the quarantine has been nesting a little bit. I don't know, just sort of paying attention to what I have like in the kitchen and stuff. It's just not something that I um, care too much about, but I think being home so much, I've just been, I don't know, spending a lot of time with all of my things. So anyway, nice to refresh. I'm really happy about my new dinnerware. It's so pretty. But anyway, how are you guys? I had a pretty crappy week, probably like most uh, most people. 
um, you know, with everything going on, it's been emotional to say the least. Uh, but this past Monday, my little Miss Fuzzy Butters was diagnosed with pancreatitis, which is a condition when the pancreas gets inflamed. And my pug, the pug that I had before Miss Butters, um, she got pancreatitis when she was about nine years old and basically just died from it because she just kept getting complications from it. So Miss Butters isn't even three years old and hearing that diagnosis, I was, my heart just sank because of how many complications my pug had with it. And of course I felt like, what did I do wrong? And did I give her too many treats? It usually comes on when they've eaten something too heavy or too fatty, or they've had like too fatty of a diet in general. But that hasn't been the case with Miss Butters. Um, we feed her, you know, this like very, you know, fancy, high quality dog food. Um, we give her just a few treats here and there, basically just for training. Um, and that's it. We never, ever give her human food because we know that that really can be the downfall of any dog's health. So maybe it's just something she is genetically predisposed to. Man, it's always, it's always really rough <laughs> trying to diagnose something because she... Um, to put it to put it gently and to put it mildly, she had a lot of tummy issues and a lot of waking up in the middle of the night to wash our bed sheets. So you know, I've just been tired. I haven't really um, kind of slept through the night in a while, and I just feel so bad for her because it's apparently very very painful. It's nothing I've ever had, um, but it is apparently something very very painful. And before we got her diagnosed, she would wince every once in a while, like if we would try and go and pick her up like her abdomen area, she would kind of wince and make like a little yelp. And I just, we just didn't know like what was going on. So now she's on special vet food. She's on a couple medications to hopefully calm uh, the pancreas, but it is a condition, I guess you could say. There's no cure for it. It's just something that has to calm down all by itself. Um, and the only way to do that is to stay away from fats really and you know, rest and all of that stuff. And pancreatitis can lead to diabetes um, because the pancreas is what um, creates insulin. Anyway, it's very painful. There's no cure, but it is kind of like a condition that can just kind of go away on its own. So we're hoping it'll just go away for Miss Butters. Um, unlike my pug, where she was just too far gone. She was too old and the doctor wasn't able to diagnose it, I think, for a while. And so she suffered with it for a very, very long time before we realized what was going on. So yeah, so she ended up with diabetes. Anyway, hopefully it'll just pass uh, with Miss Butters. So we've been dealing with that. And then we had this kind of sudden death in the family. And um, I, you know, I won't get into it, but that's never easy. Um, and it was really shocking to hear and yeah, it, it was not COVID related. Um, although I think getting ill during this time and having to be sent to the hospital is just not a good scenario. So yeah, so it's just been a really like heavy on heavy on heavy week. I do need to feed the butters, uh, her special food and her medication, take her on a walk. And my husband and I last night decided that we wanted to get our favorite protein shakes for breakfast this morning. So uh, I'm gonna run and go get those and yeah. And then probably start filming after that. box unboxing for Miss Butters and uh, I have the camera angled down so you can watch her and not me because she's really the star of the show <laughs> so my head my head's gonna be out of the frame are you ready for your super chewer box 
Are you ready, baby? Okay. Let's see what it is this month. What's in here? What's in here? It's a backyard barbecue. Are you just so excited? Are you just so excited? No, we can't do any treats today. All right, because of your, your health condition. But there's lots of toys in here. Are you ready? Okay, we have lava kebab. Yes, oh my goodness, look at this. There's three chew toys on this rope. And then, okay, this is obviously gonna be your mommy's favorite. It's a slam burger. Look at it, it looks like a little burger <laughs> with a sesame seed bun. Do you want this one? You want the burger? Okay, take the tag off. Come on, up here. Up here, baby. <laughs> Good girl. While she's busy with her burger, we got two chewy sticks and then two bags of treats. So this is pork cuts and this is peanut butter cookies. How do you like your burger? How do you like your burger? <laughs> it's like a hockey puck. You get it? You get it? You get it? Okay. Do you want to go upstairs and wake up daddy with it? He would love that. Grab your burger, baby. And we'll go wake up daddy. It's his favorite thing in the entire world. To be woken up by a squeaky toy. He loves that. He loves that. Okay, and one other dog-related thing I wanted to show you guys before my husband gets up, but I got this for Miss Fuzzy Butters to wear on Father's Day. I think this is gonna be a little bit too big for her. I don't know, but it's too warm for her to wear a shirt anyway these days. But I thought she could wake him up with this little t-shirt on on Father's Day. Isn't that so cute? <laughs> I love it. Hey guys, good morning. <clears throat> Excuse me. I, um, I can't... <laughs> I haven't vlogged actually in a day or so, so I think I left off with like a bark box unboxing. Is that what we did with Miss Butters? Um, I'm actually getting ready to go to Pilates this morning. I just started going back to Pilates last week. Uh, gyms were allowed to open uh, starting last week, so I'm really excited. So I'm starting my day off with some celery juice from Pressed for Juice. This is a juicery that's actually close to my Pilates studio. So every time I go to Pilates, I grab some celery juice and I'm on my last half. So I drink half a bottle, uh, eight, about eight ounces every morning. And um, I get a couple bottles, you know, when I go to Pilates. And so I just kind of re-up every time I go. This is my uh, last half. So I'm gonna grab some more after today's Pilates session. I don't think I'll ever get used to that taste. All right, I'm ready. I've got my incredibly attractive and sexy Pilates footwear on. Ready to go. Just finished Pilates. I'm gonna head over to uh, Pressed for Juice and grab my celery juice and then on my way home. All right, celery juice is purchased and heading home now. All right, back home now and I'm gonna make some breakfast. So I thought I would cook a little with you. Nothing too fancy. Um, I still have my black truffles that I'm still working through. We've actually had to move them into the freezer. So I'm going to make myself a chive and black truffle omelet. show everyone what you did to the hamburger. Yeah, that's what's left of the hamburger. It's basically just the inside. She tore the cloth hamburger part. You want? I think she really likes truffles. Oh, baby, I can't feed you truffles. I definitely can't feed you eggs. I can't feed you any human food. 
So I just got out of the shower and I was kind of just like rummaging around in my room and I found this bag that I completely forgot about because last week was so kind of crazy. So I thought I would share it with you right now. Um, I'm trying to figure out where to set up this. Oh, let's go into the bedroom. Yeah, let's, uh, let's do this unboxing in the bedroom. All right, so last week I ended up going to the strip and I went to the Wynn, which I actually don't go to very often, but uh, the Wynn is one of the really large casinos on the Strip and they have a lot of shops in there. And I stopped into the Dior and I ended up getting a little something for myself here. I'm still kind of debating whether or not I want to get a Lady Dior bag. If any of you guys have a Lady Dior bag, will you let me know what you think of it? It's a little... how can I say? I don't, I don't mean to insult anyone, but it just seems like such a prim little bag. And like super prim and super feminine is definitely not my style. But they have that ultra matte line, which is just really appeals to me, especially the black ultra matte Lady Dior. I'm like, wow, that looks really nice. And like holding it in your hands, like the handles feel really good. It's just a really comfortable bag, even though it's completely structured, the handles are hard. Like no part of the Lady Dior bag is actually soft and floppy, uh, except for the strap. So anyway, that's why I stopped into the Dior boutique. I just wanted, you know, to take a look at the bag again. But this item actually caught my eye. So here it is all beautifully packaged and oh, Let's do a proper unboxing. I was just gonna rip it open and show you, but let me bring you down here over the bed so you can see me actually unbox this. All right, here is the box. Here's the ribbon. And let's get that open. And here is the little Dior chicken. How pretty it's like in the shape of a cameo. So I went ahead and got this scarf that I have been eyeing for so long. I think it's the current season, but every single time I've gone into the Dior boutique, I have asked the sales associate to bring down the scarf so I can try it on. And finally, I just went ahead and bit the bullet. Not like I can wear a scarf uh, often here in Vegas right now, but the air conditioning is very, very cold. So let me just open this up and show you the scarf. So here it is. This is the scarf or stole that I got. It has this like open weave along the edges here and then it's got fringe at the bottom. It's this black and beige houndstooth. I just love it. It's got the Christian Dior here at the bottom and it's a wool Tussa silk blend and I love Tussa silk because it has this natural um, like texture to it. It's kind of very imperfect. It's perfect in this imperfect way and I just love it. And I love this gigantic oversized stole. It just feels and just like looks so luxurious. I love it. I just love it. So here are the ends and then this is what it looks like wrapped around. So I'm all set for the winter. <laughs> Don't really know why I needed to pick this up now, but it is really great for the air conditioning. Usually I have to bring some sort of outer layer. Everything is like really, really overly air conditioned here. And it's great if I just want to throw it over my shoulders. It's just a really nice like layer I can kind of bundle myself into. So that is what I picked up at Dior. Let me see if there's a name on this if you guys are interested. It just says beige women's scarf dash stoles. <laughs> That's it. All right, guys. So that is it for this week's vlog. I will see you next time.